Island ecosystems are some of the most beautiful and unique ecosystems in the world. Because many island ecosystems have been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, they contain many unique plant and animal species that can't be found anywhere else in the world. Unfortunately, just like many other beautiful things, island ecosystems are also very fragile. Natural disasters can completely wipe out some species, and island ecosystems are very vulnerable to invaders. In today's video, I will be going through a few island ecosystems that have been almost destroyed by one species. And the first island ecosystems we will be taking a look at are the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago of volcanic islands in the eastern Pacific, and they are around 900 kilometers west of South America. Famously, the Galapagos Islands are home to a large number of endemic species, and a large number of these animals were studied by Charles Darwin. Like most island ecosystems, they don't have many large land animals, but they do have quite a lot of seabirds, marine mammals, and reptiles. The Galapagos Islands are home to the famous marine iguanas, and also the multiple species of land iguanas. The giant land tortoises are possibly the Galapagos Islands' most famous residents, and it's important that creatures such as this are protected. As the Galapagos Islands are home to such a vast array of endemic animals, there are plenty of laws and protections in place. Despite this, a few invasive species have been able to cause problems here. One is a member of the cuckoo family, and the other is an animal that's much more familiar. It's believed that cats were first introduced into the Galapagos Islands in the 1800s, and they were brought to the islands on ships with many other domesticated animals. Even though cats are some of the most popular pets in the world, they are also one of the world's worst invasive species. When pet cats are kept inside, they cause no problems at all. But if they're allowed outside or if they become feral, they can cause massive problems. The Galapagos Islands have a big problem with feral cats, and these cats have very few predators on the islands. These cats predate on many of the native and endemic species, including some of the very unique iguana and bird species. GPS collar data has also shown that they feed on turtle eggs, and as the majority of turtle species are critically endangered, this really is tragic news. It's even gotten to the point where there have been many poisoning and eradication attempts, but it looks like cats are going to be a major problem in the Galapagos Islands for many years to come. The next island ecosystem we will be taking a look at is Cuba. Cuba is often criminally overlooked when it comes to wildlife, as it is one of the most biodiverse places on this planet. As Cuba is a larger island ecosystem, it is home to some larger animals. It has a few endemic birds and rodents, and it even has its own species of gar and crocodile. The Cuban crocodile is one of the most unique species of crocodile on this planet, simply because it's one of the most terrestrial crocodiles alive today. They have relatively long, strong legs for a crocodile, and they can be surprisingly nimble if they want to be. Because the Cuban ecosystem is so competitive, you'd think that an invasive species would have to be very large and very strong to survive here. Strangely, this is not the case because the animal that has taken advantage of this ecosystem is the giant African snail. These snails were first spotted in Havana in 2014, and it's thought that they were introduced due to their part in Afro-Cuban religious practices. Unfortunately, when these snails escape, they are very hard to control, and they are on the list of the top 100 invasive species in the world. They can multiply at an astonishing rate, and they can even self-fertilize. In Cuba, they were gobbling their way through crops and gardens, and they simply had very few predators in their way. In recent years, there have been plagues of these snails across major areas in Cuba, and they've proven to be very hard to get rid of. The next island ecosystem we will be taking a look at is Bermuda. Bermuda is a British overseas territory in the North Atlantic Ocean, and the closest land outside its territory is the American state of North Carolina. Bermuda is an archipelago consisting of around 181 islands, and these islands are important nesting grounds for many seabirds. For generations, these islands were a safe place for birds to raise their chicks, but unfortunately this all changed when the British arrived. Even though Bermuda was first discovered by a Spanish explorer, the British were the first to settle there in the 1600s. When the British settled, they brought with them domesticated animals, and even some very harmful stowaways. 
Just like the giant African snail, the brown rat is also one of the worst invasive species in the world, and it often finds its way to new ecosystems on human transport. To many people, rats are seen as a pest or a spreader of disease, but to the native birds of Bermuda, they were much worse. The rats would sneak into nests in the middle of the night and snack on eggs, and they'd even prey directly on smaller native birds and lizards. One of the species that was worst affected by the rats was the Bermuda petrel, and the rats affected this bird so greatly that they essentially disappeared. They were thought to be extinct for 300 years, until they were dramatically rediscovered in 1951. Thanks to conservation efforts and the eradication of rats on some islands, today these seabirds have been able to bounce back, but it just illustrates the damage that one small invasive species can do. The next island ecosystem we will be taking a look at is New Zealand. New Zealand is undeniably one of the most beautiful countries in the world, and it also has a very unique island ecosystem. For millions of years, it essentially had no land mammals, and it was an ecosystem dominated by birds. Because the majority of these birds didn't have to deal with land predators, many of them are flightless and live life on the ground. New Zealand's land birds are some of the most unique birds on this planet, and even the birds that fly are known for being very strange too. Unfortunately, New Zealand's ecosystem hasn't been destroyed by one invasive species, as really there's been quite a few. In this part of the video, I will be focusing on one of the worst offenders, and this species is the stoat. The stoat is a very small member of the muscular family, and they're famous for being able to take down prey that's much larger than themselves. This species is found over large parts of the northern hemisphere, but it's mostly absent below the equator. Like the majority of New Zealand's invasive species, the stoat was introduced by the Europeans. The Europeans introduced many animals into New Zealand from Europe, and these animals almost completely destroyed the ecosystem. The biggest problems that the stoats caused were to the native birds, as these birds were simply not used to a predator such as the stoat, and they proved to be very easy pickings. Stoats have been blamed for the extinction of many South Island subspecies, such as the bush wren, laughing owl, and New Zealand thrush. Unfortunately, this tiny predator is still causing problems today, but at least there are many attempts to eradicate them. The final island ecosystem we will be taking a look at is Guam. Guam is an unincorporated territory of the United States, and it can be found in the Western Pacific. It's home to a vast array of marine life and birds, but unfortunately today, many of the birds are missing. Guam was the setting of one of the most famous invasive species stories in the world, as many of its native birds were wiped out by one snake. The brown tree snake was first introduced into Guam in the 1940s, and it's thought to have got here as a stowaway on military transports after World War II. This snake is relatively aggressive and mildly venomous, and it's an expert at hunting smaller creatures. This snake had very few predators in Guam, with only the Mariana monitor and feral pigs targeting them. After a few decades, the brown tree snake's populations reached unprecedented numbers, and the native birds stood little chance. At one point in time, there were thought to be around 50 snakes per acre in Guam, but luckily today, their numbers have decreased. The brown tree snake is still a problem in Guam, and today some of its native birds only exist in captivity. This is possibly one of the most famous invasive species stories, and once again just goes to show how much damage one species can do. If you think there are any other island ecosystems that I could have included in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.